Welcome, and I would like to give a quick introduction in case you're just coming here. Uh, this is Physics Explained, and I do physics. And I don't do, I'll just give you the answer. No, I'm trying to show you exactly how these things work. So if, you, if you're interested in questions like this, or you're trying to get help with your physics, then just go down and subscribe, wherever that is. Uh, I do low-key stuff, but I kind of know what I'm doing. So this is a great question, um, and I have my props here. Where'd they go? Here's my other car. Okay, so this is a question from Mythbusters, an earlier season of Mythbusters, and I should note, yes, I was the science advisor for Mythbusters, but I did not work on this episode. A huge Mythbusters fan, um, and I don't know what else to say about that. We can talk about Mythbusters if you want, um, or MacGyver, also the science advisor for MacGyver. Uh, but let's talk about this problem. So here's the situation. They wanted to see what happens if you crash two cars together. So they take car A and B. In the first case, said, okay, they're both, both going 50 meters per second. The answer was actually 50 miles per hour, but that's fine. And they go, nah, and they crash. And you can make your own noises there. And then they said, hey, but what if, why don't we just take car B? And this is kind of hard to make uh, two cars collide with no one in there. Uh, to make them both hit. It'd be much easier if I could just put this one here and then double the speed of car A so it's going 100 miles per hour and crashes into that one. And is that the same thing? So it's 50-50 crashing together, the same as holding this one and then crashing in this, uh, going double the speed. Because still, the, the closing speed's 50 and 50, so it's 100. And this is 0 and 100, so it's still 100. So, spoiler alert, it's not the same thing. Okay, so let's show you why it's not the same thing. I will show you why it's not the same thing, and I will show you when it would be the same thing. Okay, so that's what I do, and I just realized this car doesn't have wheels there. Okay, so let's start with this case. It's both cases we're going to consider a completely inelastic collision. So in a collision, there's two things that we need to deal with. Uh, so I can say uh, the total momentum before in the x direction is the total momentum afterwards two in the x direction. So where momentum is in the x direction is mass times velocity in the x direction. So we're dealing with a one dimensional problem here, so I'm not gonna use vectors. Uh, this comes from the idea that if there are, uh, the momentum principle says F net x is the change in momentum in the x direction over the change in time. And so since car A pushes on car B with the same force that car B pushes on car A, they have equal and opposite forces, so they will have equal and opposite changes in momentum because the time's the same. So that's where this comes from. Now, what about the collision? So one of the things that we need to consider for the collision is the kinetic energy which is one half mv squared. So if these two cars collide and then stop, they lose kinetic energy and it has to go somewhere. Where does that kinetic energy go? It goes into this. It goes into the deformation of these two cars. See, that's their crashing. You get it? Okay. So we can call this some change in internal energy. So if I say there is no work done, then the change in kinetic total plus a change in internal energy would be zero. So that means that this change in kinetic energy is something that I really want to look at. What's the change in kinetic energy here? What's the change in kinetic energy there? If the change in kinetic energy is the same, then, then we're all good. Okay, let's do case A. Case one. So this is two cars, both going 50 meters per second, same mass, head-on collision. Let's first look at momentum. So let's put the situation here's before. I have A. I'll say this is V1 going that way, and this is B. It has the same velocity but in the opposite direction, so I'm going to call it uh, V1 also in the opposite direction. So for the momentum before the collision, here's after the collision. So I have m 
v1 plus m negative v1. So this is the mass, the momentum of car A before the collision. <clears throat> this is momentum of car B before the collision. They have the same mass. They have equal and opposite velocities. And this would be equal to 2m times v2. So v2 is the velocity of this thing afterwards. And this is the mass of the thing afterwards. It's one object now of mass 2m. And you see here that this side, if I have m plus m and v1 and negative v1, this has to be 0. So this is going to be 2m v2. So v2 equals 0 meters per second, which I already knew that, okay? But I'm just trying to show you how that works. So that's, that's where we have that. Now, what I want to do is to find the change in kinetic energy. So delta k is going to be the final kinetic energy, 0, minus the initial kinetic energy. So it's going to be minus uh, the kinetic energy of this, 1 half mv1 squared minus 1 half m negative v1 squared because that one had a velocity of negative v1, but I squared it. So this gives a change in kinetic energy of 1 half mv1 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared or minus mv1 squared delta k. Got it? Okay. Let's see if I can fit case 2 on here. So case two is similar, but now I have this, A. This is, has a velocity of 2v1, where I'm still using the same v1 up here, and B is at rest. And then after the collision, they're still stopped, right, because there's a wall there. So... Again, the momentum doesn't really make too much sense. I'll write down the momentum equation, uh, and I get... Let's, cause it does show that there is a problem with momentum. So if I write down the momentum before, I get uh, m times 2v1 plus m times 0. So this is the momentum of that one. This is the momentum of that one beforehand. And this is going to be equal to 2m times 0. So that's not conserved. And that's okay. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, it's not conserved because during the collision, there's an external force on car B, which means if I take the system of car A and car B, there's an external force and momentum is only conserved when we have a system with no external forces. So this one, momentum is not conserved. What about the change in kinetic energy? Well, let's do that. Delta K is gonna be the final kinetic energy, that's a K, which is zero, minus the initial kinetic energy of this one, which is gonna be uh, 1 half m 2 v1 squared minus the initial kinetic energy of this one, 1 half m 0 squared. So you see here I have a 2 v1, and up here I had I had two, two masses. Okay, but it's not the same because look, this is going to be negative 1 half m times 4 v1 squared is going to be equal to negative 2 m v1 squared. Not the same. So it does matter. You can't just double the speed of one and hold the other one stationary and crash them and expect to get the same kind of damage. But wait, there is a way to make it work. Because let's say I did the following. Let's say I have my case one. And those are in meters per second. Physics shouldn't matter 
where we put our coordinate system. It shouldn't matter if I put this as the origin or if I put the origin over here. It should, because the origin's not real, it shouldn't matter. It also shouldn't matter what the velocity of the center of mass of my coordinate system. So what if I have this coordinate system, but my coordinate system is moving this way at 50 meters per second. And this is what we call relativity because the motion of these things should be independent of the, uh, the velocity of the frame up to a point, okay? If you start getting near the speed of light, things don't work, but this is low speed relativity. So in that case, in if I have this, here's my new coordinate system, it's moving to the right at 50 meters per second, then this car, according to that coordinate system, is just sitting there. And this car is moving this way at 100 meters per second. So let's do this problem where, uh, which is in this coordinate system, I have this one moving at 100 and that one's not moving at all before the collision. And then after the collision, we let it do whatever it wants. Okay, because that's the same thing. That's the same thing as this. So let's start with momentum in this coordinate system. So I'm going to say uh, P total 1 equals P total 2. So I have, before the collision, I have M uh, 2V1 plus M times 0 equals, now they stick together. Okay, I'm going to say they stick together. So this is going to be 2m times v2. Now you see here that v2 is not zero. So the masses cancel and I get v2 equals um, v1. So after the collision, it looks like this in my coordinate system. I have the two cars stuck together, but they're moving with a velocity v1. And that makes sense because if this core, if this reference frame is moving to the right at a speed of v1, then those are like stationary in the other frame. So these, all these situations agree with each other and that's important. Okay, but this is important too because now I need to look at the change in kinetic energy. So let's put uh, delta k is gonna be the final kinetic energy. So in the final case, I have uh, one half and I have the mass of two m and then the velocity is v1, right? Because I have that. So v1 squared, that's my final. Minus the initial kinetic energy, I have this one, which is 1 half times m times 2 v1 squared. And then that one doesn't have any kinetic energy, minus 1 half m times 0 squared. So this is going to be uh, m v1 squared. This is going to be minus... I have four, I have four m, uh, one half four m v squared. So it's gonna be minus two m v one squared. So it's gonna be minus m v one squared. Cause I have m v one squared minus two m v one squared is that. And that's my delta k. That tells me damage. Right, because that's the opposite of the change in internal energy. And if you go back over here, this is the same thing we got before when the two cars were in moving at the same speed. Okay, so everything works. And in fact, if you want to do this in the normal reference frame, you would, right? I could have a car moving at 100 meters per second and one at zero, and I would get the same damage if, if, I let them recoil because it doesn't matter which frame I'm in and it doesn't matter about those things, okay? But once I kind of lock this down with a the wall, then I'm adding extra force into the system and it's gonna do a lot more damage. So this is not the same. So if you wanna do this and you shouldn't do this because you know these are cars, right? Um, then you need to let the, the target car recoil and then the energy and the damage would be the same as if uh, they were both going head to head. There you go. That's the answer to the problem. So if you like this, like I said, this is, I'll put some links down below for some other collision problems and the ideas of conservation of energy. I'll, I'll actually, um, 
I, you can also do this in a, in a simulation, uh, numerical calculation. And I'll do that also in another video just to show you how it works. And I'll put that link down below. Uh, so subscribe, follow me. I'll talk to you guys later. Do some physics.